Hey, this is Al McKay. Welcome to episode 108. This is the beginning of a new segment that I'm trying out. I'll explain in a moment. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Alan McKay Podcast. Alan is an Emmy Award-winning visual effects artist and mentor to many leading industry experts. Listen in as Alan talks with other industry leaders in film, video games, and visual effects about their experience, lessons, and methodology. Alan will teach you pivotal advice to fast-track your career, better your skills, and reach your ultimate dream job. Check out the latest episodes on alanmckay.com. Okay, so welcome to this brand new episode, and this is something that I just announced, and it's going to be really cool, and that is doing these themed boot camp months. So this is going to be a little bit different to the solo episodes, which I will say I put more time into the preparation. Sometimes I spend up to a week um, literally sitting down working on those solo episodes, and these are going to be a little bit more fast-paced, but I also want to try and keep them short. And that's not always going to be the case, but I want to try to keep them around 15, 20 minutes per episode. Um, But the whole idea is that at least twice a week, I'm going to be putting out new solo episodes, okay? And I think that's one thing that I have noticed there's been a huge calling for. And whenever I do uh, put out solo episodes, they get circulated more. I get way more emails and way more feedback about them. And I definitely feel like this is something that a lot of people find more value in. But I love doing the interviews and I think that they're very valuable as well. So in total right now, it's going to be three episodes per week. And who knows, it might end up growing to five. Uh, We'll see how things go. But just a heads up that this is on a trial basis. I'm doing December. I'm going to see how it goes. And if it's a success, in other words, if you find it valuable, if you email me and say, hey, this is awesome. I'm digging that I get to uh, dive into this podcast three times a week and I'm getting a lot of value from this, then I will do more of them. At the same time, if they take up all my time and I have no more free time or it's just a nightmare to get these out because uh, like I said, I don't make money from these podcasts. This is completely something that I finance myself and if anything, it costs me thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars a year um, to put these out. But I love doing it because I love hearing all the results from you as to how these episodes really benefit you. So provided it isn't something that is a major time suck and isn't allowing me to do all the other things that I have on my plate every single day, then I definitely will continue to do these as well. So you tell me whether you're finding these valuable and if they are and if I can keep this up consistently, this will become part of the new platform, which will be three episodes per week. Now, the advantage of this is I'm theming them based on a different subject every month. The whole idea of that is that this is a chance for you to benefit from these episodes by going through an entire month of content all themed around the same thing because there's a lot of times someone's like i want to learn uh negotiating so they will listen to one episode and then a few months later there's another episode similar to that and bit by bit they piece that together but at the same time being able to say that this month I'm going to be tackling this subject and I'm going to go through it and I'm going to absorb as much as I can rapid fire with all these lessons coming out. I really love the idea and better yet, it's not just going to be you, it's going to be other people. So hopefully over time, we can start to build a community around the fact that we're all tackling the subject together. I really like this idea. I'm really hoping that it works out. It'll be really interesting. I am talking really fast because I promised my team that I would try to keep the episodes in less than 20 minutes per episode because we have to um, do so much um, on top of what we're currently doing. And I already know that episode one is um, past 20 minutes. So the introduction is just going to add to this. Um, But a couple things I'm going to mention is I just finished a brand new guide um, which should be available at the time of publishing this episode on productivity. And this is uh, something I'm really proud of. I had a lot of help from my team on this. And uh, yeah, I think it's really cool. Check it out. More importantly, part of the whole bootcamp thing that we're doing is that I'm putting out a guide you'll be able to access as well on all of the episodes that we're doing this month. So not only will you get eight or nine episodes this month, December is nine episodes and it's all focused around making this the best year yet or making it the catalyst year, the catalyst for change, having an amazing epic year next year by doing these things now to front load the work, to have more success later on. 
On top of these episodes, you're also going to get a PDF downloadable guide, which will go through all of the information, all of the knowledge, and also elaborate on a lot of that as well. So that is something as well that you'll be able to get access to. And from time to time, I'm also going to put out some videos and other content as well. I'm going to do as much as I can to contribute to this every single time. And then January, we're going to be tackling a whole other subject together, February, March, and we're going to go through this and keep really raising the bar with what we do. Now, as I'm recording this, because I'm doing it ahead of time, because we still have the guide and everything else to do, one of the other big things is I'm hoping my new website will be live by now, hopefully. So either way, check out the show notes for this episode. If you go to almckay.com slash 108 for episode 108, and you'll be able to get the show notes, you'll be able to get access to the guide, uh, and as well as the new productivity guide as well. So there's a lot of really amazing downloadable content you'll be able to get access to. I'm really proud of this. I'm really proud of this new platform. I'm hoping it's going to work out really well. And on top of that, I'm hoping the brand new site is live as well. So that being said, let's dive into this episode. This episode in particular is one that I think is really important to do with this subject, and that's finding a purpose. In other words, setting your someday goal. Because just like the vector and a lot of things I talk about, I think this is really valuable to you. But more importantly, it sets us up for the rest of the month. You need to figure out what your end goal is, what the meaning of life is, what the thing is that you hope to obtain one day, no matter how grandiose it is. But let's get into this episode. And shoot me an email. Let me know what you think. Is this something that you're enjoying? If so, I'm going to do more of these. But so episodes are going to come out Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday right now. Okay, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, three times a week, they're going to be episodes coming out. Tuesdays are interviews. Wednesdays and Fridays are going to be all themed around this one subject, whatever it is we're tackling that month. And if you have ideas, if you have specific subjects that you want to learn more about, then let me know about that too. I would love to hear from you. Shoot me an email. My email is in the show notes. Otherwise, amckay at almckay.com. Okay, episode 108, almckay.com slash 108. Let's dive into this episode. All right, so let's dive into this episode. Um, What I figured would be really great related to career and like where to begin with this 2018 right around the corner, I thought we'd talk about something that I think is really important. And I think a lot of times when we talk about goals and stuff like that, you've heard me talk about it. um, You know, that is one thing to have a goal, okay? And to set like, oh yeah, I want to make a million bucks. And that's why I talk about more actionable goals, like smart goals. But the biggest thing is that it's good to be busy. It's good to have a lot going on. But if your goals don't align with what you're doing, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay. And bear with me. I'm carrying a laptop around. This is probably going to get a little noisy. We'll see. But the critical thing is that I'll look at a lot of what I do day to day. And I'm like, man, I, I crushed it. I got like a thousand things done. You know, this is really awesome. And when I look back at the end of the week, I realized that a lot of the goals that I had set out to really focus on didn't get done, okay? In other words, I got caught up in busy work and not really in moving closer to really what I wanted to achieve. So it's really easy for me to uh, have a lot of phone calls, reply to a lot of email, um, you know, do all this stuff. But if my goal was to get a bunch of lessons done and all the meetings, everything else that I did didn't inch me closer to that, then at the end of the day, they're all distractions. And I think this is really critical for us is to start to think about our someday goal. In other words, um, really having something that we set out and ultimately want to do. So let's say if you were to go beyond five years, if you want to go for your someday goal, like a goal that you want to accomplish, you might right now think that it isn't even possible to do. But what if for a moment I could magic, you know, wave a magic wand or you could, you know, perform a miracle and get that thing that you're setting out to do, what would it be? And I think that a lot of us are too scared to kind of say that out loud because we're too afraid of being judged or other people telling us it's ridiculous um, or you just think that it's not even possible yourself. And one of the more common things that we all have is that inner critic. And that's that person inside of us telling us, you're not good enough. You're going to fail. You're not going to achieve the things that you set out to do. And if that's the case, then 
it's really going to screw you up when it's time to be really honest with yourself and say, what the hell do I want to do? Maybe you want to own your own studio one day. Maybe you want to direct a feature film. And that could sound crazy. It's like, yeah, right. Like as if I could do that. I'm just a 3D animator or I'm just a designer. Uh, you know, whatever it might be that you're doing. Maybe you want to make your own game. Um, maybe you want to be a millionaire and you want to kick back and relax. Like whatever those things are, you got to think that, what if it was possible, how would I go and achieve it? And I, I think that a lot of us just instantly, you know, rule something out without really thinking, well, what if it was, let me entertain it for a minute. What would I do then? You know, and having that someday goal takes the pressure off. It isn't five years from now, I must be filthy rich and running this, you know, massive company and doing all this stuff. Instead, by making a someday goal, it's basically saying that one day I'd like to get there. I haven't got the blueprint in front of me, but this is ideally what I would like to do. Okay. And, you know, you've heard me, I'm sure, talk about like me being 14 and having that goal, which I felt was impossible at the time, given the fact that it was the 90s and, you know, internet, everything else um, back then didn't really make the world as small as it is now. It was very unachievable for me to say, I want to go and, you know, VFX supervise a, a movie and, and um, do all this crazy stuff. And I want to work in Hollywood and do all this stuff. Um, to me, that seemed like it would be a someday goal. It would be this life journey to maybe get there, you know. And I think these days, like, everything is so much easier than it would have been back then. And that's a whole argument for another time. But I feel like everything has changed. The world has become so small. All the tools are around for us to do pretty much anything we want. So that goal, I look back at now and I feel is, is ridiculous and I should have aimed a lot higher. But to me, that's okay that I could set a goal that could be a someday goal and then by 21 have crushed it. It means that I've got room to set a new goal. And bit by bit, I've had those goals and I've moved through and I've achieved that one and it's on to the next one. And I think if anything, it gives you that direction. I always talk about your vector. Well, this is that like, it's your north. You know, it's it's the thing that is really driving that compass saying, well, this is the true direction. So whichever way you're swaying, ultimately, this is the way that we're heading. And the reason I want to really talk about that is by having that goal, it gives you a moral compass. Okay. So in other words, by having this ultimate goal of, let's say I, I want to direct a feature film. Okay. By having that as your your ultimate goal, it allows you to instantly have that gut feeling about whether, you know, all of these things are working for you. Let's just say, for instance, that I have that goal and I'm doing all these other things and I might be killing it. Let's say that right now you're working in architecture or you're working in a completely different industry and you want to work in film and eventually you want to direct a feature film. Right now you might be making all this money you might be um, doing really well in your career. You know, all the people around you are patting you on the back. Great job. And you kind of feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm being uh, successful right now. I'm doing all this stuff. But by having that true north, by having that moral compass, by having that someday goal, instantly you realize like all the work you're doing right now, is that actually getting you any closer to your bigger goals? Because for me, a lot of time I might be thinking, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff, I'm really busy, I'm, I'm making money, I'm doing great. And then I think, well, do any of these things move me closer to my someday goal? If, and it should be really easy for you to make that decision. And I think that one of my friends, for instance, uh, he used to work, he actually wrote a book on this, but he used to work for Facebook. He's one of the top 30 employees. I don't know why that's a theme at the moment, like in the in the th top 30, but um, he was one of the top 30 employees or number 30 employee at Facebook. And this is back when Facebook was very early days. And um, yeah, basically he ended up getting fired and uh, he ended up writing a book about the whole experience and the big kind of learning lesson that he kind of endured from that. And now he's completely killing it. And he's doing really well. But I look at um, at his experience and some of the things he's talked about. And like one of the big things he always mentions with Mark Zuckerberg was always that they had one goal, one focus. There was always that one thing. And I like that because I can more recently resonate with that. And I'll explain in a moment. But basically by having that one goal, okay, for them, it was growth. It meant when he would be in a meeting with Zuck and he would say like, hey, you know what, call me crazy, but why don't we focus on making money? Wouldn't that be a cool thing? We'll start charging for stuff. And every single suggestion that was thrown at Zuck would be, 
either a yes or a no based on does this align, does this get us closer to our goal, our one goal, our one thing, okay? So it meant that instantly any suggestion to get made, it's like, well, does it bring us closer to our one goal? If it doesn't, which is growth, then throw it out. By having that one goal, it means that it's a lot easier to say, well, this isn't taking us in the right direction. It's taking us in a different direction, throw it away. And by having that perseverance, by having that kind of uh, sheer laser focus in what you're doing, it means that everything has to align to get you closer and closer. You know, the way I look at it is you could be in an ocean and in one direction you got land and all the other directions you got open ocean. Okay. You want to be swimming towards that land. Otherwise you're going to drown. And I feel like with infinite options out there, that's exactly what we go through a lot of the times. It's so easy to get distracted and say, well, next year I'm going to go out and I'm going to do my big goal. But this year I'm just going to keep freelancing because I keep getting jobs and I might as well just keep doing that because I don't want to say no to anything. And um, for me, that, you know, something I've talked about a lot, I've done a podcast episode on was my big year of, of saying no, like 2015, saying no to everything. And that's why this really resonates with me because by having certain goals, and by the way, I'll just segue for a second to say that like, let's say you're in a company and you, if you have your one thing, that doesn't mean that everyone else doesn't have their one thing. And by doing that, you've all got your little goals that will move you closer to the big picture. So everyone has those tasks, but it's just you're not spreading yourself thin. You're not, uh, let's say, a, a dog chasing shiny objects, if that's the thing. I don't know, but but that's exactly it. Like you, you've got that sheer laser focus and determination. And like I said, that moral compass. And for me, by having that year of saying no, it didn't mean I said no to every single job that came up. It basically came down to a gut feeling saying, is this going to align with what I want to do. And when I had like all these big opportunities popping up everywhere, and I'm always grateful that I, I have those options, but it really surprised me how quickly I could shoot them down. The minute, like the second I'm getting excited on the phone is the same moment I'm realizing I've got to turn it down. And never in my life have I had that clarity that this isn't right for me. Before it would always be, okay, this sounds cool. Let me think about it. And then bit by bit, it would just end up happening. You know, I, I remember there was a week where I had turned down work at Scanline, Digital Domain, this other place called Luma, a few other places, all in the span of the same week. I think Sony as well. And then out of nowhere, I end up saying yes to this like crappy car commercial for this like irrelevant, you know, small place. Um, and it was just timing. It just came down to the guy was buying beers and he's like hey why don't we meet up tomorrow and you know I pitched this thing and I'll, I just ended up saying yeah okay screw it you know <laughs> you know over a couple of beers just kind of agreeing to it and um, and then the very next day I actually had one of my friends a producer call me up about a really big movie that I actually would have loved to have done uh, you know and, and it's just one of those things that like now in these days having that goal of like well why am I first of all turning down certain things it's because uh, these aren't right for me and this other job definitely wasn't right for me but having my guard down not having that that moral compass that direction I ended up saying yes to something that I totally wasn't interested in in the first place and for me now I have that clarity you know by having that focus it means that you can say well look all this money is nice all these other things are great but is this getting me closer to directing a film well first of all I'm not even in the right industry that should be my big focus and bit by bit kind of inching your way towards it because as long as you're on that path you've got that certainty, you've got that thing inside of you saying like, yeah, I'm getting closer, I'm inching closer to this someday goal. And because there isn't that immediacy of like, six months from now, I need to be directing feature films, there's instead the the confidence and the calmness of knowing that you are moving towards that goal, that you are swimming closer to land. You can see in the horizon there's land and you know that in every other direction, there's just open water. So you know you're going in the right direction. You know you're just going to keep doing it, keep paddling, and eventually you'll get there. And I think that's really critical because, again, it's so easy, and I'll sound like a broken record with this, but if you have a someday goal and then you were to say, well, okay, what's my five-year plan to get towards that? You can say, okay, well, for five years, i got to be doing, you know, i got to be at this point, i got to be at least in the industry and maybe have made a short film by then, and, you know, I've got to have established a, a bit of a relationship with other people maybe um, I need to have an agent by that point so that way I can actually start trying to get the meetings I need with the right people 
And that means, well, what's your three-year plan? Well, your three-year plan means, okay, well, I have to have a, a short film made and it needs to be out there. I need to be doing the, the, the whole short film circuit. My one-year plan, I need to be working in the industry and building connections and really getting my skills up and, and have boards done and all this other stuff. And then if you look at, well, what are you doing today to work yourself towards that goal? And you think, well, I'm not even focused. That's not even on my radar right now. I'm working in architecture and I'm, you know, really comfortable making the money I'm making. And I'm not even doing that thing that I, I really want to do. Shit, like there's not a single thing I'm doing right now to get me towards that goal. And by having that clarity, having that realization, it makes you realize, well, shit, right now you need to start making changes because you're not swimming towards that land. You're swimming in a different direction. And that means as of today, you need to start changing that direction. Start going in a, in a place that you are getting to etch towards the film industry and all these other things. And maybe it means just freelancing on the side. Maybe it means calling it your buddies and seeing if you could do some work on weekends or help out on a shot. Maybe it is just working on a short film in your, in your spare time and boycotting the whole going into the industry um, if you feel that you're already at a level that you could do what you need to do or finding other people who can do the animation and all the things that you want if you just uh, want to write the script and make the film, like whatever it might be. But I think it's very easy when you can look at, well, here's where I want to be and these are the steps I need to backtrace to get there. Five years from now, I need to have all these things in place. Three years from now, one year from now, well, what am I doing today? What am I doing? What's the one thing that I should be doing today that's going to get me closer to that goal and start making those changes? So I want to start with that because, again, I think it's actually one of the hardest things to set out to do. I don't think it's an easy thing to say, well, I want to be president of the United States or I want to be uh, president of Microsoft, whatever your goals are, whatever, however crazy they might sound. It all starts with you being comfortable saying it out loud, at least to yourself. And more importantly, you need to start today making changes that are going to reorientate you so you are swimming in the right direction so you are swimming towards that land and you are starting to get there and by having that it means it's going to be a lot easier for you to realize with every decision you're making is this getting me closer is that promotion and renewing my contract at the the place i'm working getting me closer to my goal no okay well what can i do again it doesn't mean that you need to do these rash decisions of quit my job and risk everything to go out there and uh, you know risk my career in hopes of fulfilling my dreams. All it means is that you need to start thinking about how do I get there? What are the things that I need to do today? What are the changes I need to start making that will get there? And maybe it is that that one year goal is to have left your job. Okay, so maybe 2018 is all about transitioning out. And that means not just having one option by but instead creating multiple options. Work a lot of overtime at the beginning of the year. I talk about 363, and that is how I will always kind of break up my year into doing six months of hard paid, you know, hard work and using that time to allow myself to have time to live and have a life now rather than, you know, thinking I can enjoy life when I'm retired and old. I can instead try and have those mini retirements now. But more importantly, there needs to be three months where I am working hard at crushing my goals and, and working on the long-term things. So in other words, at six months, you condense a year of work, a year of salary, you kill yourself during that time. And then the rest of the time is more about focusing on the more important things. And like I said, that doesn't mean that you need to um, say, all right, well, here's my January to June plan. And then I'm going to do the next thing. It just means that, you know, you go through those spurts where you might do a month where you just kill it. You work day and day and night, you work hard and you clock up the vacation time, the time in lieu, all those things that allow you to then perhaps be able to take a vacation uh, later in the year, or maybe it's an unpaid vacation, but you build that relationship with your boss over the next few months where you mention that you might want to take some time off uh, to go travel or whatever it might be. You don't need to tell them that you know, you're doing something else, but the whole point is you're creating uh, opportunities for yourself to be able to do the things you want. So like I said, your someday goal doesn't mean that you need to go and make drastic changes now. It can be that, well, one year from now, I want to be in a different career. So what do I need to do? What are the steps I need to do today to make that happen? Who are the people I need to get to know? Online, offline, going to conferences, whatever it might be. What are the skills I need to learn? What's the experience I need in my resume to get those jobs? 
And that might mean going and knocking on doors. Like I said, take an unpaid vacation or take a paid vacation, whatever, and go and freelance, like have a reel ready. So now working on that reel, doing all these things, calling in the favors, whatever it takes, look at those resources. This month is definitely going to be about that. I'm going to be hitting this hard, going through a lot of different stuff and, and really trying to go deep on this. I kind of like the idea of this new format that I want to try out just because it means that these episodes no, don't need to be too overwhelming. They can be just a quick five or 10 minute thing, but it's all things that are focused around the same theme of that month. Our goal being that next year, I want you guys to be prepared to hit the ground running. So what is it now that you can do that is going to get you closer and more prepared? So when January comes, you're ready to rock and roll. You've already hit the ground. You're already doing your thing. And now it's more about taking the next steps. So think about that. Think about what you're doing. Think about what your goals that you just set out. Like maybe you already said 2018, here's what I got planned. These are, you know, my, my big plans. I'm going to cut back on alcohol, this, this, and this. And that's when you might need to think, well, do these align with my bigger goal? Okay. Cutting back on alcohol, then I don't get to drink with Alan next year. Hell no. If anything, I got to work my tolerance. Okay. So cross that one off the list. So think about this stuff because you need to start really aligning yourself and really start to make change now. Like I said, it doesn't need to be the, the big drastic ones. It needs to be about just reorientating yourself. So think about that because I'm going to be back in a few days and I want to tackle the next thing, which I think is going to be really critical, which is figuring out those long-term plans and condensing them down into a really aggressive and measurable goal that we can all do. And bit by bit as we go through this, I'm going to go through uh, some of the, the networking stuff. There's a lot of different things we're going to be doing. And it isn't just going to be like a let's talk woo-woo goals this entire time. But cutting all the bullshit, this is the most important part. And it's honestly the hardest part. You trying to decide what you want to use to define yourself is like your, your ultimate thing that you want to go out there and achieve. That is a hard thing to do. So don't expect to be able to click your fingers and do it. And don't give yourself a bullshit excuse either. Like, well, I'll just set something simple. Like I want to have a uh, hundred K and doing a job that I like. That is not, you know, that is bullshit. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So look at that. That can be your, your thing for this week. Just think about like, what do I really want? What excites me? What interests me? If I were doing this for the rest of my life, what would I really be happy with? And more importantly, if you didn't have to work, I think this is the best way to look at it. If you didn't have to work, what the hell would you be doing every single day? What would you find fulfilling? I know a lot of us might say, well, I just watch TV all day long, but after a while, I guarantee you're going to get bored and you're going to get antsy. In fact, that's sometimes what I do if I really want to motivate myself. I go and I, I sit down somewhere by myself, bored out of my mind, no TV or anything, just because I guarantee within 30 minutes, I'm going to be so freaking bored, I'm going to want to go out and do something. And with this, I think it's worth putting in that time to figure out what the hell it is without thinking, well, that's not achievable or I'm not good enough or whatever it is, this can be just for you right now. But it needs to answer that key question, are you heading in the right direction? And what are the next steps you need to take? So I promise as we go through this, everything is gonna become more and more hands-on, but for you to figure out what steps you need to take, and for every decision you make from now onward, you need to know which direction to head. You need to know what that goal is. And most people still to this day don't know, and they're just doing what they're told. Their parents or someone else made up a decision for them as to what should define them. Being a lawyer, an accountant, a doctor, or whatever it might be. In other words, stable, respectable, financially secure. And if you enjoy one of those things, then that is freaking awesome. Double down on that. But if you're not doing what really drives you, being creative, I guarantee you're probably going home at night, either doing it in your spare time or wishing you were. But cut the talking about it out and start actually taking action. And it all starts here. It starts now. So think about that. And I'll be back with a couple more things in uh, a day or two from now where I want to really double down and really get into the nitty gritty about this. But I feel like this is an important subject to talk about. But I'm excited about all this. I'm excited to try out this format of more rapid fire stuff because it's great. For me, this is something where I can get hands on. I can really dive into it and say, okay, great. Well, here's everything that we can do right now. Line it all up step by step and start going down that path together. And it might get to a point where, you know, the more I interact with some of you, 
because I mentioned the 90 day, um, 90 day year and a lot of people have already gotten excited and emailed me. Some of you, I apologize. I'm still catching up on email. Uh, email is definitely not my, my lifelong goal. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'd be failing miserably right now. But um, it, it definitely is an important one for me that I will um, try to respond to as much as I can. But more importantly, as this goes on and more of us are saying, hey, well, this month we're going to tackle branding or this month we're going to really dive deep into confidence. Like that might be one that, again, like I, it surprises me that so many people actually tell me that they wish they were more confident. And it's not one that's on the agenda anytime soon, but I love the idea of like, well, what if we spend a, a, an entire month on that? Well, we do a kind of a online boot camp where it's just like, okay, what are five things that we can do this week that are going to make us uncomfortable, but in the long term realize that, hey, there's nothing to be afraid of. And like, what can we do within a month? You know, so um, that's where it, it really excites me. But some of the, the subjects just off the top of my head that I do want to get into is going to be, um, you know, breaking into the industry or transitioning careers, just because I think that a lot of people, that's a big one. But uh, negotiating money, um, adulting. So I think that, again, might be a good one for a lot of people, just because um, some of us do or have kind of skipped that. And, you know, just in terms of just realizing, well, how do I budget everything? How do I uh, think about my future? And how do I um, make myself more stable within the company that I work at? How do I build business relationships and personal relationships, all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, and more focus on the visual effects, it's going to be things about like um, how to, from the ground up, like build your website, build your reel, um, how to make yourself more searchable online. So, you know, let's say how to make a reel that can go viral, um, you know, how to really set up your LinkedIn and everything else is doing it all in an accumulative thing where you can start to have that 360 uh, access to everything and really build up your platform. So there's definitely a lot, including building systems like every day for getting work and automating a lot of that. So work comes to you without you even needing to do anything. Or if you want to venture out and start working from home, what are the tools to, to start using? How do you negotiate that with your bosses? How do you reinvent yourself so that way you're only taking on work as a vendor or as a freelancer rather than being an employee that needs to be on site? Um, all the bits and pieces. So I, I definitely love the idea of this. So I'm excited about it. Let me know what you think because I, I do feel like the solo episodes were something that has been missed a lot. And whenever I do do them, uh, they always seem to really blow up. So uh, I'm hoping that this is something that you definitely want to see more of. And at the same time, like just like with the podcast, I'm going to do a set amount of episodes and just see if it works, if it's something that you are interested in. And if it's not, then I put my time elsewhere. And so I definitely want to hear from you and hear your thoughts about this. And um, yeah, if there's something that is working really well, I definitely will uh, make that the future of the podcast. And I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being three days a week, then it could easily become five days a week. And it's all about that momentum. So that could be kind of cool to um, have a 10 or 15 minute episode every single day. Might be a bit overkill having me in your ear that much, but we'll see. So I'll leave it there until next episode. But this is definitely going to be a killer month. I'm excited about this. I hope you are as well. Okay, so I hope you found this episode valuable. Like I said, this is just the beginning and I do think that there's going to be a little bit of growth spurt as we go through this. I know with the original podcast, the one of the first things I did is I put out six episodes just to see whether or not it was going to be a success, whether or not it's something I wanted to continue to do. And uh, obviously it worked out very well and I continued to do uh, the podcast. Just like that, I am trying this out. I'm going to do December but I want you to tell me whether or not you're enjoying these. So best way to do that is to shoot me an email. More importantly, if you can go to the show notes, almckay.com slash 108, uh, you'll be able to download the guide that goes along with this month. So it's all the information that's being shared as well as more all in there as a, as a downloadable PDF ebook that you'll be able to access. On top of that, there'll be a link. And this is the important thing. If you can leave a review, click the review button, leave a review on iTunes. It would mean the world to me, but it's a good way for you to indicate that you're enjoying the show and you want me to do more of these. And like I said, I will try to be putting out three episodes per week, which for me is huge because one used to be a huge struggle. I'm insane. When I was trying to free up more time, I ended up making more episodes. What the hell is going on? Okay, so I'll leave it there. I will be back with episode 109. 
then next week we're going to be tackling more and more really awesome episodes. Okay, so I will leave it there. Thanks for listening. Rock on.